So what do you think, guys? Today it's all about the best sounding music, recorded music, you've ever heard. Now, I, I think I've done this before, but with a slightly different twist this time. But, you know, the best sounding recorded music, it, it's very subjective. It's very personal. There's not going to be, there's going to be some crossover that you like something that I like and vice versa. So these are, these are your choices. I could tell you about mine, and I will very shortly, but great sound in audio equipment and great sound in recordings is so, uh, so much going on in, in a piece of recorded music that to nail it down like this is why it's great, I don't know. But I think the first and most important aspect of what defines a great sounding recording on a personal basis is that it moves you, it excites you, it thrills you, and it doesn't even have to be over a great system or anything. It just is something intrinsic to that music. Not just the notes, but the sound of it that takes you someplace, that rearranges your brain, that makes you feel different and better. That's that's what this is about. That's what this is about for me. And I would say, I could start with in a, in a few different ways, but I'll start with Motown. There was something about the sound of 1960s Motown records by the Temptations and the Four Tops and the Supremes, Marvin Gaye. They had a theme, this band, the Funk Brothers, that were the backing band for all those records. The arrangements were just so cool, so innovative. Every record that came out had these amazing players on it and then great songs and great lyrics and great singers. So the whole thing, you just heard it over the crappiest radio in a car and a little transistor radio. You heard it and you, wow, I gotta hear this again. I remember when the Supremes, You Keep Me Hanging On single was on the radio. <clears throat> this is, I think, I guess, in the late 60s. And I remember sitting with a friend of mine, hearing it on some AM station and then tuning on the dial back and forth and finding it again and again and again. We could do this for, you know, like, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes or something. We just kept saying, oh, we gotta hear it again, we gotta hear it again. We, neither of us actually owned it, so we, we needed it. So we kept looking for it and we kept finding it. That's how, that's how in the moment that kind of music was. I'm gonna get to the great sound, really great sounding audiophile recordings a little further on in this video. But now I'm, I'm starting at the beginning, like what really moved me? And there was something about black music, Motown, but also Otis Redding was huge for me. It was something about his voice. Again, his, he put everything into those vocals, everything. You feel like after he sang that song once, he was done. <laughs> he was totally drenched, he was spent. But he did it again and again and again. And James Brown, again, for me, was huge. This is before the funk, the funky later James Brown. This was just the hard soul R&B James Brown of the 60s. Incredible, absolutely incredible music. So, again, it was the sound, but it was also the music. It was the performance of the music that just took me, took me places, right? But then, but then it happened. I heard... Led Zeppelin one on radio. I ran out to buy the LP and I played it to death and I wore out copies of it. I just played it again and again and again and again and again because it was so much bigger than other rock music at the time. Bigger, I mean, and bigger in its impact, in its power. John Bonham's drums, Jimmy Page's guitar, Robert Plant's vocals, John Paul Jones' bass lines. They just had this, everybody else seemed small. I don't care who they were, the, the Beatles, the Stones, Pink Floyd, the Who, they were tiny, tiny next to the power of Led Zeppelin one and two. By the time we get to Led Zeppelin three, uh, that was more unplugged, it was good, but it didn't have that emotional, overwhelming, uh, the onslaught of sound coming out of your speakers, just, freaking masterpieces, Led Zeppelin 1 and 2. Then we get to Jimi Hendrix, and 
the first record are you experienced the second record axis bold is love i like them but when we get to the third one electric ladyland that's the one that's the one is it is a sound record it starts with just pure weird noises that jimmy's making slow down speed it up and it's called like god's made love it's just it's just pure sound he was a sound architect as much as anything as much as a musician playing notes on a guitar he made sound with feedback and distortion other people had done it too link ray had done distortion but jimmy's distortion was and so had pete townsend from the hoot that played around with distortion but jimmy took it to another level and it was the pure sound aspect of jimmy's distortion that again was just gigantic for me absolutely gigantic and when he died at 27 years old and there was going to be no more of that i was seriously bummed but luckily one when jimmy was alive he made a lot of recordings he you know he was always in studios recording so probably still now there's still new new jimmy hendrix coming out so even though he died at such a young age there's plenty there was plenty more coming along you know long after he died so that was something and of course the beatles i mean the beatles sound you know really sound again separate from the music of sergeant pepper and even uh, revolver those records are sound uh archi there's sound architecture going on there's just something monumental about creating those sounds that never existed before on records so uh 60s were a great decade for music 70s uh, definitely slacked off in the 70s i got nothing to say about sound there was some really good music happening by the late 70s but i would say the the highlight of the 70s were brian eno's first recordings uh here come the warm jets uh before and after science another green world whoa that guy was it was another sound architect he just had this way of the, the, his records are actually more audiophile than the others because he's using layering and space and ambience and stuff and just treating the sound of the instruments in weird ways and then there's these ambient recordings he just and he still is that's the amazing thing about brian eno he's still making beautiful sounding mind expanding experiments in in a studio or in a computer that just makes sounds that no one else can make so brian eno was gigantic for me but then there's the audiophile recordings. Now, I just made a video, and I'll just link to it below, of my favorite Chesky Records recordings. Chesky Records is an audiophile label based in New York, where I am, and I had the, the luck to attend many, many, many Chesky sessions and work on many of them. So I heard them from the inside, and I heard them as they were being made, and I heard them still at home. And uh, in terms of David Chesky's vision, of capturing the sound of people playing together in a room which is usually a church but sometimes studios but mostly churches that have really good acoustics and capturing that as completely as possible uh, is amazing to me still is amazing it's not always successful but as i said i will link to my favorite chesky's but then there's my favorite ma recordings that are done by todd garfinkel and i will link to his website and some of my favorite of Todd's, which are also made to sound like you're hearing what actually went down when people played the music. Now, in Todd's recordings, again, he, as far as I know, he hasn't recorded in a studio in decades. He likes recording in great acoustic spaces. So the sound of the instruments filling that space is the sound that you get on the recording. It's not added later. It's not added reverb or anything. It's just the sound of these people playing in a beautiful acoustic space. You know, reference recordings. Um, Keith Johnson is the engineer. Again, decades, decades of experience. One of his very first records, I think his first record is called Red Norvo, uh, that he recorded uh, on his own analog tape recorder that he built himself as a teenager is just pretty freaking amazing. Uh, and he's still around, he's still making great recordings. 
Cavi Alexander for Water Lily unfortunately hasn't been making new music <clears throat> and they're out there and you can look for them and they're stunning same thing great recordings of music played in really beautiful acoustic spaces uh, Dorian uh, is another company that's made actually massive amounts of recordings again also done of more classical music and world music and stuff but not rock or pop music um, great great stuff so this is a huge part of my life so I'm citing many many examples of what I consider to be great sounding recordings or sound, recordings that make me feel something that is the underlying goal that is the, the top goal it's not underlying it's at the peak it's what I want at its best recorded music to do is to move me make me feel something make me feel better change me that's what I want so now it's your turn I want to hear from you guys what music is moved you is really really important in your life and again it doesn't have to be the obvious popular choices it could be something very very specific to what you want out of music then there's just music to listen to music it doesn't always have to have that quality but I'm just saying at its best that's that's what I want it to be so I think I think I'm getting near the end of this so you know what happens next right my name in case you missed it is Steve Guttenberg this is the audio Philiac daily show and it does come up five or six days a week right now and uh, if you dig it please subscribe hit that button right down there when you do you'll see a little icon of a bell you got to hit that bell to be notified actually when there's a new episode uh, I'm also can be found on Twitter at audiophiliac man on Instagram at Steve dot Guttenberg and uh, best of all best of all I always save the best for last you got to check out my patreon and that can be found at P A T R E O N dot com slash audio filiac. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you back here again very, very soon.